We've now explored the economic incidence of both taxes and subsidies. And while we found that the statutory incidence has implications for which of the curves shift, it has no implications for the ultimate economic incidence of the tax or the subsidy. For taxes, we found that the per unit amount of the tax is introduced as a wedge to the left of the original equilibrium, with the higher price becoming the price that consumers end up paying after the tax, and the lower price the price that firms end up receiving. For subsidies, we found the mirror image, which is not a surprise given that subsidies are the mirror image of taxes. Now, the per unit subsidy is introduced to the right of the original before subsidy equilibrium, with the higher price becoming the price that firms receive and the lower price the price that consumers pay. Now once we know that this is the ultimate economic effect of taxes and subsidies, we can dispense with shifting curves. We can just draw the final outcome of the tax, the final implication for prices for consumers and firms, and the same for subsidies. Now when we look at these two graphs, it seems that the burden of a tax is shared roughly equally between consumers and firms. The price for consumers increases by about as much as the price for firms falls. And similarly, the picture here looks like the price for firms increases by about as much as the price for consumers falls under a subsidy, so that the benefits of a subsidy are distributed roughly equally between firms and consumers. But that's only because of the way that we've drawn demand and supply curves, which takes us back to the topic of price elasticities. What if these curves have different shapes, different slopes? Would the outcome be different? So let's explore that for a minute for the case of a tax. Suppose that instead of the demand and supply curves we've graphed above, we have a very price inelastic or steep demand curve with consumers relatively unresponsive to price changes and a relatively shallow supply curve with firms relatively responsive to price changes. We then start at this initial equilibrium price. And when we introduce that wedge that's equal to the per unit size of the tax to the left of the equilibrium, we find that the price for consumers rises by a lot, whereas the price for firms doesn't fall by a lot. So now the burden of the tax is not equally distributed between firms and consumers. It falls primarily on consumers. Or think of the case where we have the opposite. Relatively price inelastic firms and relatively price elastic consumers. Now we start at this original equilibrium price. And when we introduce that tax wedge equal to the per unit size of the tax, we see a steep drop in the price that firms receive and a small increase in the price that consumers pay. So now the burden of the tax is borne disproportionately by firms and not by consumers. And this should kind of make sense. The burden of the tax is passed to the side of the market that's relatively less responsive to price changes. So if you're not responding to price changes a lot, then it's easy to pass the tax along to you. So here, consumers are relatively unresponsive, so they pay the bulk of the tax, whereas here, firms are relatively unresponsive, so they end up paying the, the bulk of the tax. We can also think about what the implications of price elasticities are for the change in the quantity that's transacted in the market. Here we see that wherever that wedge is introduced, that's where the new quantity in the market will be. So what if the two sides of the market are relatively price elastic? So we have a relatively shallow demand curve 
and a relatively shallow supply curve. We start at this original equilibrium, and now we introduce a tax wedge that's equal to the per unit size of the tax. Here we see a significant decrease from the original quantity before the tax. So we see a very large error on the horizontal axis. If we drew the same graph with relatively inelastic demand and supply curves, and we started at the original equilibrium price, and then introduced the same sized wedge, the same sized per unit tax, we would get a relatively small change in the quantity transacted in the market, a small error on the horizontal axis. And that too should make sense. If consumers and firms are relatively unresponsive to price changes, then taxing them is not going to change behavior in the market very much. But if they are relatively responsive, then as you introduce that tax wedge, consumers are going to cut back a lot, as are firms. So we can see that price elasticity is it Price elasticities again have implications for how both the burdens of a tax are distributed between consumers and firms and how the overall quantity changes in the market. And we could do the same thing for subsidies. You could draw very similar graphs and explore what's the impact on the relative benefit that consumers versus firms receive from a subsidy. How does that depend on the price elasticities of demand and supply? And how does the change in the overall quantity in the market, which we see at this new wedge, how does that change depend on the price elasticities of demand and supply? I'll leave you to do that on your own before you take the quiz, and I may ask you a few questions about that on the quiz.